This Talk to Seattle, and I'm your host, Jason Rigdon. On this episode, I have Phyllis Porter, who's running for Seattle City Council in the 2nd District. How are you today? I'm doing well today. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing pretty good. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe your background and experience? Sure. Um, I'm an experienced organizer and advocate for safe streets here in South Seattle. Also, as an educator and community activist, I'm a seasoned advocate for communities of color. I've advocated for safe streets, uh, pedestrians, cyclists uh, throughout District 2 and actually throughout the city. Uh, I've worked in trans, I've, I've volunteered in transportation. I've worked on bringing Black Girls Do Bike to Seattle. That's a Black, um, a bicycle group that's aimed to get Black women, women of color on bicycling. So I've got over 100 members and that's moving pretty forward. Uh, I've been involved with post-incarceration people. I've worked with them um, as they are actually trying to re-enter society. So I can go into a lot more detail as we continue on about some of those things directly. Um, yeah, I'm a mother, a mother of two. I'm a grand- grandmother of one. And just been working, volunteering in the South End of Seattle for about the last seven or eight years. And what made you want to run for this office in particular? What made me want to run for this office in particular is that I've done a lot of work out in this district. Um, uh, I've worked with people that are struggling. I've worked with the homeless. I've worked with people that can't pay their bills. And I've worked with people that have actually got injured on Rainier Avenue and during the times of some of the really tragic accidents. And just listening to the people, I've been able to bring people together. I also was a, a, a vigil li- liaison, whereas Anytime anyone was hit by a car and they lost their life or they were seriously injured, my job was basically my volunteer position was to actually talk to the community, talk to the family. So I'd go out to the families, find out exactly what happened for the family, if there was any type street design uh, that was the issue with the incident that had happened, the collision with the child or the family member, I would actually hold a vigil. I had the very first vigil I had, it was 200 people. The, from the community, I brought together not only the community, I brought the, the, the mayor of Seattle, I brought SDOT, the police department, um, city council, and we came together and we were able to talk and we were able to come up with solutions that changed policies, that made policies. So I think it, since I've been working in the community, bringing people together, getting people involved, listening, and finding out what needs to be done, I've been able to take it down to city hall and been able to actually uh, get some policy uh, changes for that. And could you tell me a little bit about your district? Yes, this district is pretty big. It serves, um, there's very little, there's very many small communities from, I could say, Beacon Hill, Brighton, Chinatown, Columbia City, Mount Baker, I could go on, North Beacon Hill, Rainier Beach, Rainier Valley, the Rainier Vista, Soto, South Beacon Hill. So it's made up of a lot of small communities, Hillman City, Georgetown, Genesee, um, as you know, um, our district is the most diverse in the city. And right now, people are really struggling with the effect of gentrification. You know, people have been pushed out. People have been here for years, for generations, and they're losing their homes. Um, I have friends that I've known for decades. Uh, they're having to move farther and farther away from a place they once called home. So that's one of the, one of the bigger problems. Um, another issue or another thing about our district right now, again, like I said, there's great deals of challenges with affordable housing small business investments, there's issue with transportation, uh, transportation, just making sure we have reliable transportation, making sure we have safe streets to move around the community, the neighborhood. And again, we have more casual, casualties here on our main arterial, Rainier Avenue, more than any other part of the city. So that's one thing that we're struggling with right now. Uh, we don't have as many resources in this area. Um, our current policies, the current policies that are in place right now are pushing people out. Again, they're moving farther south, Kent, better way. They're moving out. And so there's the biggest challenges you think are facing the neighborhood? The biggest challenges that are facing the neighborhood, is facing our district, is affordability. Like I said, again, people have been pushed out. And I know what it does when it impacts families. Children grow up worrying, you know, are they going to be living on the streets like other families? They're worrying, do they have enough food to eat? The parents, one single, one uh, family household, as opposed to those with the single mothers that are really struggling every day. Uh, so lack of affordable housing and displacement, homelessness, big challenge. Lack of transportation, options and displacement, a challenge. Um, and as you know, the uh, evidence is overwhelmingly serious about uh, having to build more affordable housing, and we need to we need to build houses now. And what do you think are the biggest issues facing the city as a whole, maybe? The biggest challenge facing the city would be lack of affordable housing and displacement, homelessness. 
uh, I would say lack of transportation options. Options, um, Homelessness, housing, those are going to be the biggest ones, I believe. So how can the city help homeless folks? Number one, we need to make sure when we are building houses, um, well, let me start with this. First of all, we shouldn't um, criminalize people for po- poverty. Uh, we have to do more. There's no one solution to the problem, I believe. And, we, and it takes more than one person. We can't just build homes. We have to make sure we have wraparound services, you know, because there's some homeless people are suffering with mental illness, drug treatment. We need rehabilitation beds. So we need to have that wraparound service. So when we do pull people in from the streets and into homes, we can continue to make sure they get the treatment or the services they need. And hopefully, you know, from going right back into the street. Um, it's going to take everybody. Uh, it's going to take everybody to share the load. We need to make sure that our each neighbor is doing their part. Um, and again, homelessness is a regional, it's regional. We have to have a regional approach when it comes to homelessness. We have to reach out not only from the city, we need county, we need other municipalities, we need politicians. Everybody has to get serious to make it happen. We need that strong, progressive voice on pushing and working with neighbor municipalities and addressing this together. You touched on it earlier, but what can the city do to help improve our transportation system? I think the city needs to continue to work to improve streets uh, where people can actually walk, bike, and get around their communities. Um, People should not be afraid to cross the street um, because cars are speeding down the avenue. I think um, floor speed limits need to be put in place. We need to do as much as we can to make sure that we're we're keeping people moving along. Um, We need to also consider... um, when we're working on, on the streets, when we're working on pedestrian safety, we need to make sure we can we consider the needs of seniors. We consider the needs of family with strollers, people with disability when building this new infrastructure. Also, um, I think there's a lot of advocating for more sidewalks. We need to listen to those advocates. I think there's a lot of av- advocacy for curb cuts, for new crosswalks, and other pedestrian improvements across the city that we need to listen to. Also, focus on the basics, like the potholes, the falling bridges. The, I'm sorry, the failing bridges. So those are some of the things that I think that uh, we can do, um, whether, you're, whether, um, whether you're driving, whether you're riding transit, you're walking, you're biking, you're moving freight, everyone, we all need safe, reliable, and affordable ways to get through our community. Another major issue facing the citizens of the city is housing affordability. What do you think the city can do to help improve that? Well, first thing, I think it is cheaper to keep someone in their house instead of getting people off of homelessness. So the first thing we need to make sure for the people that are in their homes and that are about to lose their home due to the price, you know, the affordability prices is to help them as much as we can, you know, with rental assistance. If people are having problems with debt, a debt consolidation, teaching them ways in which they can better themselves to make sure that their bills are paid once the affordability um, crisis is um, pretty much taken care of. Also, for people that are at the end or right at the tip or at the beginning of eviction, we need to work with landlords, work with, work in, um, work with rental assistance, because first of all, we need to keep people in their houses. Also, for developers, when developers are coming into a community right now, I mean, when they're coming in to build, they can actually put money into a fund or they can build a certain certain number of affordable housing. And I think right now that we should not even ask for the fund. I think we should just have more affordable housing built, just continue to build affordable housing. On top of that, when a developer buys a building, and there are people that are already living in that building. Let's say it's an 800 unit. They want to buy it, tear it down, or do whatever. And there's 125 people that live in that unit that are already on public assistance, low income, and they already have a certain rate that they pay every month. Well, when that developer comes in, buys that building, I think the developer has to automatically roll those people over into the new building. So therefore, these people will not be displaced because what has happened in the past, we have been displacing people. When businesses come in, we tear down the building, whatever they need to do to keep it up, we move these people out because they don't qualify. So that's another thing I think that the city can do. Make sure that they're stricter on the developer. Make sure the developer is, is going to do what they talk about, you know, keeping people in their houses. And also, I think developers in the communities need to sit down and talk. 
If you can have a, uh, have a developer go into the community, find out what they want, find out what they need instead of just coming into the community, building and building. Sit down and talk to the um, sit down and talk to the community and see what they want and see if you can work something out. Hear it firsthand. Yeah, so many people have been forced out of the city and are having to move, you know, into the more kind of suburban areas and it's away from their homes. And it's just crazy. That's exactly right. And then just look at the people that actually they work in Seattle, but you cannot afford to live in Seattle. You can't even really afford to live around the cities close to downtown. If you're working in downtown, you have to move so far out. And then most often, these are the people that don't make a lot of money. You know, they don't they're not uh, a lot of times there are people that don't make a lot of money and they have to move. They, they move out and then they have to drive so far in every day. And that's causing money. That's wearing tail on the car. So. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to work. Yeah, we really need to do something about that. So we live in very polarized times. How would you as a city leader work to bring people together? Oh, let's see. Take it. I'll take you back to being a liaison in the community. Uh, I brought people together in the community. I've listened to the community. I've gone down to City Hall. I brought those two together. Um, that community relationship building between those two. Again, I've organized visuals. I organized rallies. I brought people together. Um, they stood beside me uh, as I had gone to fight for them. So I think I have a track record of bringing people together, getting good policy implemented. Um, and again, I want to continue to listen. I want to be that responsive leader. And when I say responsive representative leader, I mean people that have lived the same experience of struggling or going through those same experiences as people that need to be represented. So I want to be that representative. I want to be that responsive leader because I have those life experiences and I know um, how these issues can impact a family. Most often when you look at city council, you have, you know, you have policy makers, you have lawyers, you have a whole range of people that, um, that are good at making policy or that's what they've gone to school for. Or they know policy. But then if you look at each of those committees that those city council people have, whether there's housing, social justice, a lot of time the people that are sitting at that table or at those tables are people that have actually gone through what it is that they're trying to build policy for. So again, I want to be that representative. I want to be that person who represents the people that have some of the same life experiences of struggling as I have gone through. And are you accepting the democracy vouchers? Oh, yes, I am. Yeah, it's a really great program. I'm really encouraging everyone to make sure you don't throw them away like maybe last time. <laughs> yeah, and if they have thrown them away, you know, they can't have them replaced. Uh, just All they have to do is just go online, uh, democracy vouchers replacement, follow the link, and I just ask you to fill out a a lot of few lines and send it off and eventually you'll get your uh, democracy vouchers at your home. And if people want to learn more about your campaign, where should they go? Oh, they can go to my website. I'm at electphyllisporter.com. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, thank you for having me. This has been Talk to Seattle. And I've been your host, Jason Rigdon. If you want to support the show, would you please follow us on social media? We are Talk to Seattle on both Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for listening.